Japanese koshu. <laughs> My days of getting anything right on this show are over. Yeah, no, nah, different. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Blind Wine Tastings. And for the astute observer, you will notice that we aren't actually in the studio right now. We have moved studio. Like we might give you a bit of a pan around the place. We are actually in a packing shed in the Adelaide Hills, believe it or not. And of course, thank you so much for all the, the kind love words and suggestions on Discord. We listened to you. If you guys wanted bracketed tastings, they're coming. They'll be from basically today onwards, you're gonna see more bracketed tastings. But we you wanted to see more globally relevant wines, wines that for folks that live overseas, we had a lot of love, especially from uh, the States, the Nordics, uh, all through Asia. Just yell out where you guys are from. You wanted wines that you guys could actually access. So we have those coming. And to help us fuel this, to help us bring you the things that you guys have been asking for, we've actually got a brand new supplier. So big welcome to Different Drop, uh, who are now supplying the wines for the show. They were absolutely super keen to jump on board. We've had a pretty long relationship with the guys from Different Drop. More than 10 years and they were all too willing uh, to jump on and support the channel. All the wines that get tasted on the show from henceforward will actually be in a special collection. I'm going to link it in the description below. Jump on the Discord channel if you want to um, uh, chat to us, chat to the team. Different Drop are actually quite active on there as well. But without further ado, it is time to get into the wines. Okay, number one, Bubbles. Flying stuff. That smells cool. That smells really cool. The acidity isn't too peaking. In fact, I'd actually say it's about medium. It has this really lovely, gorgeous, almost uh, apple cider-esque take to it. Not in a funky way, but in a, in just a really broad, honeyed-like texture. Jarring experience to drink something that you want to be cold, but it's actually in a nice medium temperature. But the texture of this thing is fantastic. It's got this lovely, like, silky, velvety, like, structure. It's not, like, tannic or anything like that. It's just really silky smooth. Unfortunately for me, I, I can't get an Uber home from here, as I usually do from the tastings. So you guys are going to have to watch me dribble more shit than usual into a spontane like this, but... I instantly forgot that I was meant to spit that out. Like instantly, I've just swallowed it straight. Fuck me. All right, um, Vermentino. Yeah, like summer drinking, hot day, by the pool. $30 bottle, I don't think it's stupidly expensive. So I've just said a bunch of contradictory shit and says that it's Italian, so it's probably not gonna be 30 bucks. It might be Vermentino, which might not even be an Italian grape varietal, but fuck, anyway, here we are. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Moving on to wine number two, we have a crystal clear wine. Like that is absolute brilliant clarity. Look at that, it's almost like water. And what do we know about this, guys? It's either probably gonna be Sauvignon Blanc or Amazing Riesling. I missed this platoon, dude, I'm so bad. Oh my God. That's a great wine. That's an excellent wine. And a lovely acid. It's got a lot of length to it. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get real niche. I'm gonna go for like the craziest call. I'm gonna go pick cool. Like it presents as a really quiet Puyi Fumé. And we're actually seeing this as at ambient temperatures. At a cold temperature, this would be so lean, so crisp. I would anticipate this would age remarkably well, even though it's got lower acidity. 35 bucks, because you've got to filter it. The filtering costs money. And I'll have three bottles of it. Because it's useful to have around, because a lot of people do like that style. They don't usually hang out with me, so I don't need many of them, but three will do it for now, so. 12 bottles, easy. I'll drink this all the time. 25 buckaroos, I reckon. That's, that's one I want it to be really good value, and I want to just chug through, uh, but really awesome wine. Uh, wine number three, sorry. Golden. Peachy, oh, like, get yeah, like lemony. This is more um, orange than anything else, more yellow. Lifted, dense aromatics. A Little bit of badinage, really awesome. Rounding things out, but the aroma is just to die for. Lean, driven, oh man, I'm like salivating. Lean, driven acidity, and a phenolic structure that's almost like powdery, a little bit like a dried, like a dried pear. Oh my god, all right. Um, there is a really delightful integration of oak and that kind of savouriness here that I'm really enjoying. Freaking amazing. I would, I'd happily spend actually about 55 bucks a bottle on this and I'd buy six. Onto the reds, onto the reds. Nice kind of light bodied, lighter medium bodied red wine. Firmly in Pinot territory. Wow, wow, okay, this is next level. There is no way that I'm spitting that out. Although it presents a little bit thin on the palate. Mm, maybe a bit of a hint. Maybe a bit of a hint. Maybe maybe this is not from Australia. 
Yeah, I'm into that. Love that kind of primary fruit character. It's raspberries, red cherries, strawberries, all of those kind of different things. I'm swallowing some, look, you can't stop me. Um, a bit of tannin in there as well. It's tasty, it's a good one. New way that I go about deciding my wine of the week, which one do I want to swallow the most? Um, I think it suits the purpose of a like really friendly, playful style of Grenache. Uh, really good fun, really, really good. Moving on to wine number five, we have a much denser, darker color, a much more uh, stringent rim, so perhaps uh, something that's been sort of filtered and maybe from a larger producer, we'll see. Very drinkable. It is like that cut, greenery, like freshly cut vegetation going on, and you can taste that in the wine as well. The wine it just screams fun. As soon as you stick your nose in it, that's exactly what it screams, and then when you taste it, it backs it all up. It's like lovely, brambly, purple, bubblegummy flavours. Real pristine acidity, big upfront fruit. Not hollow in the middle, so maybe not cavitate. Maybe barking down this sort of Portuguese part. That vexes the crap out of me, and I love it. I love this wine. This is really tasty. Fresh. This is gonna ruin my career having spit these wines out. Um, I can't, I'd be, you'd be hard pressed to um, not enjoy this wine, I reckon. Really, really cool. Absolute hubba bubba. <laughs> All right, last one for the week, we have another denser, darker, more firm-rimmed little red wine. Really floral, but also, like not to gender the scent of florals, but it's like this masculinity to it as well. It's got red fruits, purple fruits, like dried fruits. It's got, yeah, those lovely cherry things, those plums, and then it's kind of like raisiny, sultana interest in the top of that, like musket, muscatels and stuff like that. I wonder if these are all from the same country. I wonder if that's the bracket. Now it's, now it's vexing me, the bracket is vexing me. Fuck it, I'm gonna go Gamay. And I really like this. Uh, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab 12. Really love it. I think this will develop really well over like four to five years. Don't wanna keep it too long, but it's got enough character there. It is really delicious. I, this is this is just uh, an Aston Martin. Merlot, it's a Merlot, it's not a Merlot. Don't be stupid. Um, I swallowed it again as well, fuck. Uh, God damn it. I don't know, the boys all had a variety. I've said it's a sports car, that's good enough for me. Let's see what everyone else thinks. Sweet. Cool, awesome. First shoot in the new studio. Take and first shoot with different drop wines as well. Yay. This was this was this was quite a departure from what we used to. Really interesting wines. Yeah. I got to wine number five and then remembered that this was a themed bracket. I looked back at my notes. I'm like, mm, no theme here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other dynamic I found yeah. really challenging because now I'm like, like. What is the theme? Can we guess that? What was your take on theme? What do you reckon it was? I, I went Southern French. I thought this was left of center French reds and whites. Yeah, France didn't come up once. <laughs> <laughs> I was very much so in Italy, but let's find out how we went. Well, wine number one, starting at the top, sparkling little number, which was maybe yeah, not sparkling one, for you. Yeah, one, six, was that six, sparkling six. for you guys? Yeah, yeah it was 100%. It was, yeah, it had yeah. a nice little froth on the top. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got... I bought a dozen of it flat. Like, <laughs> yeah, so imagine yeah. how much I like yeah, it when it's fresh. Two dozen sparkling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honey, the acidity wasn't too overbearing, it was just, everything was yeah. quite mellow. 35 bucks, I wanted six. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I said. Six yeah. and a half a dozen. said 30 for 12 and I thought it was a Skinzy Vermentino. Yeah, I went Skinzy yeah. Viognier, so another Skinzy B varieties. So I yeah. went Noah, I went yeah. Noah. Interesting. Um, lucky. How much was it? Whoa, magic, magic, magic number. number. Straight away, new, new, <laughs> yeah, new studio, magic number. Where are we at? Okay. Pet nap. You have never seen this before. It is Pet Nap, Petal and Natural, unfiltered Viognier, <laughs> yes! Uh, that is impressive. That and, is very impressive. And a variety that I've never heard of in my life called Merwa from Lebanon. Okay, when the... <laughs> what? <laughs> Lebanon... No, it's just really impressive that you just picked up a pet in in general, let alone... Uh, a Lebanese. Lebanese. That's but... stunned. That's, uh, certainly it's one of the best Lebanese wines I've actually tried. Yeah, I agree. I haven't tried many at, yeah. at all, but this is great. Sorry, yeah, go on. Wine number two. I've... I don't think I've seen a wine that looks like water as much as that does. I completely agree with that. Yeah, 100p. And it's a void of colour. Yeah, and really quite like elegant, delicate. 55 bucks and I want six. Said so 35 for three. I went 12 for 25. I drink a lot of this. Oh, uh, on, on it. Nicely done. Well on done. It. On it. What is it? It is, uh, this is Dude. Japanese Koshu. <laughs> My days of getting anything right on this show are over. Yeah, with different no, drop different. Involved. Yeah. <laughs> They've just been like, "Hey, Henry, guess what? That You're a beginner the most again." Japanese, like I said, elegant, delicate. It is. It is like you know, just that that um, minimalism. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just that 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 whole sort of Japanese aesthetic thing that usually you would associate with the culture. 
You cool. can show showcase it in the wine. It is pristine. It's beautiful. I would drink shitloads of this. This is fucking cool. Guys, I reckon this the rest of this bracket is therefore going to be mighty exciting. Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> going to be really obscure countries. All right, so wine number three, we went... Uh, I, I felt this was going in a bit more of a skinzier or like a textural territory. Yeah, 100%. Super delicious. This this was one of my first... I oh, know, still six on six bottles on it, but I actually was dropping a fairly decent amount of cash on it again, another 55 bucks. It's like oakier now or something. Yeah, there's, mm. like, there's a really good use of ochre. Yeah. What country do you reckon it's from, given? Fucking <laughs> like Hungary. Like, 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 <laughs> well, Hungary's a good one. I reckon Sardinia. Madagascar. I go, All right. Sure, no, uh, Madagascar. Sure. <laughs> Just <laughs> you wait. On, on the basis of what we've seen, <laughs> yeah. mate, I've, I'm not the authority uh, on this. I had 44 bucks for six. 55 and six. 43 and nine. Oh, oh my God. 82 bucks. Dude, Coke <laughs> Tokai, ferment. Is uh, it hungry? Fruit. It's, yeah, it's hungry. hungry. Fuck me. What's going on with Nordic? It's on oh, fire. We're on. Hungry, Hungarian, uh, wow. ferment. Yep, there you go. Yeah, imported by the guys at Sellahan. So, I mean, I can't say I drink it all that much because it's not If very... it tasted like that, I'd drink it more often. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few. I've, I've tried a few and they're all great. I think this... we've had ferment on the show possibly once or twice. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's never been as textural as this. It's yeah. always been quite lean. I what, like this. What variety is it? Sorry. Ferment. Ferment. F-U-R-M-I-N-T. Thought that was a person. Cool. <laughs> Minty fur. Minty fur. I think Jakob. Jakob is, is, the, is the person. Is Jakob. The... If that ain't Pinot, I'll eat my hat. I thought it was Grenache. Um, oh no! <laughs> well, once again, I've done the thing. Uh, the thing. Yeah, I've, now I'm getting into Henry's get rid of it. Oh, no. I reckon this is my one of the lineup for sure. I think this was just shit. They found me. Well, cops are coming. No, I reckon that might be TDU. TDU. We got the tour down under, rolling through here. They might literally be. today. All good. Cycling. Twelve, and I want eighty bucks uh, for it. Twelve for fifty. I had 12 for 30, and I thought it was Young Shiraz. Young Shiraz, You were way off base. You know, there is so that briny base. thing, there is that saline thing. You could be not mm. wrong. Oh, this God, an expensive cool. lineup. This is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. Here's a lot from Patagonia. Well done, brother. Patagucci. Patagucci. Uh, fantastic. We've had, uh, this is, <laughs> this might be the first, but the only time we say this in the show is like, the second time I've had a Patagonia second time. Yeah. on the show. Uh, and Both that, times rated pretty highly yeah, as well. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it makes sense why. Like, it's a high altitude and very cold. Uh, so it makes sense it'd be a really good place to grow pinot. It's a pretty wine. But it's a very pretty wine. wine. Do you know what I'm going to be drinking for our vodcast this afternoon? <laughs> that. That is so cool. Yeah. And we kept it rolling, man, because wine number five, I was just enamoured by. I don't know what the variety is. It smells like, it smells like really ripe Bordeaux, but has real upfront flavour. It has this sort of uh, lavender thing that kind of led me down that Tariga path to yeah. a Portuguese path. So I was just, I don't know where to place this. Is it a blend? Is it a single variety? It's whack, but I love it. It smells like gardening, man. It smells like cut greenery. 39! Cheap. Very good value. Cool label. Got the Spiegelts. How good from Slovenia. Slovenia. <laughs> so nice. It gives me a lot of vibes of Austrian like uh, yeah. red wines, which had like really blackberry, spicy, like yeah. um, bunchy thing to it. But from Slovenia, first Slovenian Damn. wine I've ever had. Fucking mental. Um, That's really good. <laughs> Like good value. This is like if you like those uh, like confected Grenaches, yeah. you know, bright young things. But this is like if you inject spice on top of that. Yeah. Like it's a different take from it. So this kind of can give you a little bit of width of breath because sometimes those like those confected ones can all be a little bit samey sometimes. Yeah. And I like that's awesome. And I love the kids pirate show label. Like it's just awesome. <laughs> like awesome. it's that so is very cute. cool. Awesome. And I, you could chill this down. Oh. oh, and you have so much fun. That Maybe it's the beautiful. clear bottle that's indicating that, but yeah, that's an awesome one. Wine number six. I thought it was Grenache. Somehow, though, it's got outrageous acidity, so that takes that out of the list. I, <laughs> I don't know where we're at anymore. Early. This is like down is up, up is down, and the sky is yeah. purple. Six for 70 bucks. That's, oh, I said 12 for 70. 12 for 75. Wow. We're, we're, oh, all, we're, we're all, all on high end. This. We're all rating this. Ah, oh, bang. <laughs> Here we go. There we are. <laughs> Uh, MDR, Shiraz, Malbec, Cabernet Sauv, and from Nick Spencer in Gundagai. Gundagai. I just, they're, they're, On the road to Gundagai. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely... Not even a single Grenache grape in the whole damn thing. No. Across all of these, we've got this diverse array of different countries of origin, different places yeah. to grow grapes. Yet, this one wine here speaks of so much quality as well. We were all at 70 bucks. All at 70 bucks yeah. plus. 
Well, I'm going to say this is probably one of the most fun brackets I've done in a while. It was the most. <laughs> it was one of the most challenging. Oh yeah, and man, rewarding. Just absolutely nowhere near getting any of this right these days. <laughs> yeah, legit. But what is the one of the week? Patagonia. Oh, my vote's on Patagonia. We Sorry, all had. Henry. We all had twelves. Best value of the week. Best one of the week. Cool. Take that one. Uh, yeah, the helicopters are coming yeah. to get us. We'll talk to you soon, guys. We're gonna run! <laughs> what is going on? The president's arriving! Oh, shit. We did not check the, uh... That looks like an absolutely dreadful thing to be doing on a day like today. I'll be oh, honest yeah, with you. This won't happen every week. <laughs> Perfect pairing for the Tour Down Under is uh, Patagonia Pinot Patagonia Pinot Patagonia Pinot Noir. <laughs> On that note, see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>